Hey everybody. Um, I don't know why I went to my live screen. I'm gonna go. To yeah, there we go. That's, That's better. better. Um, welcome to the Sunday sermon series. Um, I want to talk at first a little bit about where this kind of came from and where I see it going, and kind of introduce the series just a little bit, and we'll go from there. So. This series kind of came about from, you know, one reflecting on the start of the channel that happened last year and really trying to figure out where I wanted to go in terms of what 2019 would look like for the Crimson Experience and Crimson Gaming as a whole. And when I thought about it, I wanted to be more genuine about my faith. I wanted to be more proactive in my faith and I wanted to show not just y'all but myself that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ and when I was thinking about how to do that I got some very rude comments um, which hasn't necessarily been uncommon but I got some rude comments through social media uh, talking about my channel and attacking me personally and of course you know a lot of us people will sit there and say that's not okay and you'd be right it's not okay to attack a person based off of an idea or something you just don't like that they may do or not do whatever and so while I was licking my wounds so to speak trying to uh trying to get that out of my mind um trying not to let it affect me which a lot of them really don't bother me um but this one in particular did i don't necessarily know why but it got me thinking okay um this is go bear go home this is this is crunch time. Do I back away and let this person win in that they don't want me talking about my faith on a gaming network? Or do I up the ante? Do I put more faith into my streams, videos, content, and just kind of say, look, you're not going to – you're not going to deter me from doing what I know is right. You're not going to push me away. You're not going to make me cower. You're not going to scare me. And as I was heading to church that morning, um, the song Through the Fire that those of you that are on Twitch heard just a second ago came on my radio. And it reminded me of the story that we're going to go into tonight in Daniel chapter 3, and it just kind of reminded me that this channel is not just for me. Yeah, I really enjoy having this channel. I really enjoy being able to enjoy your guys' company, but this channel ultimately is for God. God's going to take this channel and do what he wants it to do at the end of the day, whether it's successful, unsuccessful, whatever it may be um and he's allowing me to be the vessel for him be the mouthpiece be the hands that use the controller you know whatever we do on this channel god is using me as the vessel to accomplish these things and so what i will have in this sermon series is i will it will be either a story or a chapter or a multitude. Of It'll be some portion of the Word of God, the Bible, um, that we will talk about. And I will have made some notes. It's, it's not, this is not intended to be several hours long. I plan on having a few guests in here uh, in the coming weeks to help me with this. Um, and 
I will be having, like I said, I'll be having friends in here help me with this. They're going to give some of their insight, but uh, from the end of the, at the end of the day, the words you're hearing are God-inspired. Listen to the Word of God, and I will be using the New American Standard Bible. I will show you my Bible here. As you can see, this is my Bible, and tonight will be in Daniel chapter 3, like I mentioned a minute ago. But for those of you that will be listening on YouTube, joining us on the YouTube, uh, I highly encourage you, not just for personal reasons, but because it, I think it would, have, would offer more for you, uh, join Twitch if you haven't, and be sure to drop a follow on my Twitch at Real Crimson Gaming, um, because what I do on Twitch is some other things that won't be available on YouTube. And that, the main thing is, on live, I can play music, I can, you know, I can get away with a little bit more than I can when I upload to YouTube, or when Twitch has its rewind capability. I get away with a little bit more, so it's much better to watch it live. And if you have questions, it's much easier to reach out to me. Um, so yeah, if you have a chance, I'll be doing this Sunday night. The time will vary. I planned on doing this about two and a half hours ago, uh, but I was waiting for a friend of mine who was supposed to join me tonight, but couldn't. Um, so we're here now. Um, but I've talked about what this series is. Where I want it to go is I want it to be kind of an alternative for some of you that maybe want to have a family small group time um, or just a friend small group time. You know, I'm not going to try to put limits on what God wants to do here. But my hope is that you can use you can use this not necessarily as a substitute, but as a spring into having having a Bible study together with your family, having a Bible study together with your friends. And you may take what I read and have your own group about it. Or you may join me. That's okay. I'm not trying to reach my viewer count or my chat count or whatever through this. This is just solely because I want to reach all people with the Word of God. That's solely what this is for. And so, in that, I want I will be, for several weeks, talking about uh, what it's like to be a modern-day Christian. And I'll be taking some of the older stories, like the one we're doing tonight, Daniel chapter 3, and I'll be kind of putting a modern twist on it. Kind of saying, okay, this is kind of what it would look like today. And this is what I hope is, you know, especially for those of you that are Christians, to kind of see a way to live your faith in today's world. In the day of technology, in the day of, I hate to say it, people hiding behind a computer screen to tell very ugly things. The day of just constant mayhem going on around us. And that's kind of where I want this to go. But I also want you guys' feedback. I want you guys to kind of be like, hey, can we do something about this? Can we do something about that? That's what I want this to become is a place where you can come, you can learn Maybe not necessarily absolute factual truth, absolute God truth, because the only God truth is from the Word of God. Everything outside of the book is just my opinion and any kind of summary that I offer. Outside of the Word of God, everything I say outside of there means nothing. 
I want everything that I say to be inspired by this book. But don't just sit there and take my word for it. Read, read the Bible yourself. Read along with me if you want to. Um, I highly encourage that. And if I'm wrong about something, let me know, please. Um, but I want this to be a place of community. I want this to be. I want this to be a church. I want this to be a body of believers meeting together through a webcam and a chat box, albeit. But I want this to be a church. I want this to be a place where we can all gather together, encourage each other, lift each other up, and grow together as little Jesuses or Christians, which is what that term means, little Christs. Um, one thing that I have started doing that a lot of people— I've had a lot of positive feedback on was last week when I was talking about the guy sending some very hateful comments to me was I started my rep my cross challenge. And as you can see, I am wearing my cross necklace right now. And it, but rep my cross is yes, encouraging Christians to be a little bit more open. Um, uh, yes, it is partially the clothing to represent your cross to wear your cross but it's so much more than that. When I want, when I made the rep my cross, um, when I came up with that, I wanted it to be a call for Christians to be open with people, not just other Christians, but with the world. One reason the world does not like Christianity or Christians is because they don't see us as genuine people. They see us as hiding behind masks of living this perfect life. And any of us who have spent any time in a church building whatsoever know that that's not true. And when you represent your cross, you don't just represent the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross for you. You represent the hardships that come along with carrying your cross. I believe it was Paul told us to take up our cross daily. I don't know about you, but trying to carry something doesn't get easier with time. It doesn't. The longer I carry something, the heavier it gets. It doesn't matter what it is. If I carry a piece of paper right here, I won't be able to hold it all day. Even though it's just a piece of paper. A piece of paper weighs next to nothing. Or heck, holding my Bible. If I hold my Bible right here, or I put it, I hold it up over my head, just like this, I can hold it for a while. I can hold this for some time, but after a while, this Bible gets heavy. It's not because the Bible is eating extra donuts or, you know, actually gaining weight. It's because my body is getting tired. My body gets tired holding things. And it's the same way when you carry a cross. You can't just set it down when you feel tired. You have to keep going. You have to keep pursuing Christ. Because every time you put down your cross, I think of it this way. I think about the, and I think it's a good illusion. Um, the road towards Christ is entirely uphill. It's entirely uphill. And Jesus, through his sacrifice, put our crosses on wheels. Well, that's a double-edged sword because you don't have to drag the cross. You don't have to drag it over rocks and stuff like that because it has the wheels to keep it moving. But if you set that cross down up here, it goes backwards because those wheels are going to carry it. It's going to go backwards. So every time you put the cross down, you have to regain that ground that you had made. And so the best thing to do is to not put down your cross and to keep pursuing Jesus in everyday life. And it's not easy. No one has ever said that living the Christian life is easy. And as we'll see in the passage of Scripture I'm about to get into, uh, it usually says quite the opposite, that... Following Jesus and being a Christian is an absolute calling, 
And it's a calling to deny yourself for the glory of God. But without further ado, I'm going to get into the passage. I'm going to read the passage straight through. And then I'm going to go through kind of my summary and then some connections and then all that good stuff. So Daniel chapter 3, I'm going to start in verse 1 because that's usually a good place to start. Um, the king had the king's name is Nebuchadnezzar, but for the sake of Nebuchadnezzar, it gets really hard to say several times over. I'm just going to call him Neb. So Neb the king made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits and its width 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Neb the king sent word to assemble the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that Neb the king had set up. All that fancy words were, cubits was an old measurement. It was kind of a, kind of an inconsistent measurement as it typically had to do with a person's body length or a body part. Um, and then all those people he sent word to was basically the pe the people in their type of government. That'd be like getting our governors, mayors, lawyers, politi other politicians, the president, getting those people in on a big meeting to dedicate this big statue that King Neb had made. Um, let's see. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, To you the command is given, O peoples, nations, and men of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Neb the king has set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at that time, when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, flute, lyre, trigon, psaltery, bagpipe, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Neb the king had set up. For this reason, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought charges against the Jews. They responded and said to Neb, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears all the music... Um, to, is to fall down and worship the golden image. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So I'm going to go Shad, Mac, and Benny, just like the uh, Veggie Tales. Thanks for the inspiration. These men, O king, have disregarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Neb, in rage and anger, gave orders to bring Shad, Mac, Shad, Mac, and Benny. Then these men were brought before the king. Neb responded and said to them, Is it true, Shad, Mac, and Benny, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of all the music... You are to, to fall down and worship the image that I have made. Very well. But if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Shad, Mac, and Benny replied to the king, O Neb, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Neb was filled with wrath, and his facial expression was altered toward Shad, Mac, and Benny. He answered by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. He committed certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shad, Mac, and Benny, in order to cast them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their caps, and their other clothes, and were cast into the midst of furnace of, ba of blazing fire. For this reason, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace had been made extremely hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who carried up Shadmach and Benny. 
but these three men, Shad, Mac, and Benny, fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire still tied up. Then Neb the king was astounded and stood up in haste. He said to his high officials, Was it not three men we cast in, we cast bound into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, Certainly, O king. He said, Look, I see four men loosed and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm, and the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Then Neb came near the door of the furnace of blazing fire. He responded and said, Shadmach and Benny, come out, you servants of the Most High God, and come here. Then Shadmach and Benny came out of the midst of the fire. The satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's high officials gathered around and saw in regard to these men that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men, nor was the hair of their heads singed, nor was their trousers damaged, nor had the smell of fire even come upon them. Neb responded and said, Blessed be to the God of Shadmach and Benny, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who put their trust in him, violating the king's command and yielded up their bodies so as not to serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a degree, decree that any people, nation, or tongue that speaks anything offensive against the god of Shadmach and Benny shall be torn limb from limb and their houses reduced to a rubbish heap inasmuch as there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Then the king caused Shadmach and Benny to prosper in the province of Babylon. So, oops, hold on. Get me back to yes. Nope. Sorry about that. Uh, I have a little Streamlabs thing, and the Bible hit one of the buttons. I'm going to have to fix that. Um, but what this, to quickly summarize what happened, King Neb built this large statue in order to, what he said aloud, which was basically more like force, those living in the area to worship this statue by, and essentially worship him. It made it a requirement that was punishable by obvious death. 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 Um, there, was, there was this point in which he was like, okay, um... When you hear all this music, you're going to fall down and worship. And Shad Mac and Benny was like, uh, nah fam, this is this ain't our God. This ain't the God we serve. Um, the king tried to give them a second chance, uh, which was refused. He became so mad, he heated up the furnace to the point where those that put them in the fire died. That tells you it's a hot fire. Um, and then Neb had seen four men in the fire, and we don't know if it was an angel. The Bible says angel, so that's usually what I'm going to go with, uh, but it is often believed that Jesus or the Holy Spirit was the fourth entity in the fire. But that that's a really cool story I've, I've always been a fan of that story it's always been one of my favorites uh even when i was learning it through watching veggie tales as a kid um so when i was reading this story and thinking about the recent events it kind of aligned with me thinking about how today some people are willing to try to force some kind of religion, idea, whatever, down your throat. But what they do is they may advertise it in a much prettier light. And they may offer like, oh, this, oh, you're going to be wealthy. You're going to live forever. You're going to fill in the blank. And in all honesty, in a lot of cases, it's a form of manipulation. Um... And in my opinion, we see a lot of this in the media, Hollywood, and other key places like New York that are huge in our media, whether it be movies, plays, TV shows, uh, media coverage, whatever. Um, they want us to. They want to tell us what to think about everything. They want to tell us what to think about this person, that type of people. Uh, this select group, that ideology in it. I am very much an individualistic type of person. 
I'm not going to sit here and tell any person who watches this video what they should think about whatever. I will give you my point of view. And I hope that I am open and upfront and honest about living the Christian life because I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's hard. Uh, Shad Mack and Benny can attest to that. It's hard to live a life committed to God and Jesus. Um, they were literally thrown in the fire for it. But one thing I like to is there are certain religions that tell you exactly when you're allowed to worship their God. Um, one example I took was Islam, and they're supposed to pray a number of times a day um, at certain times. And what I like about Christianity is God, our God, looks at us and he's like, nah, you need me, come talk to me. You want me, come talk to me. I want to be your father. I want to be your friend. Of course, I'm still going to punish you when you do wrong. And, you know, I want you to live a certain way, which is a lot more the fatherly aspect. But he wants us to feel comfortable going to him as we would a friend. And that's not, you know, I have friends that will tell me, look, if you need me, I don't care if it's three in the morning, you call me. And I'm that way with several of my friends. If you need me, you call me. It doesn't matter when, I'll be there. That's our God. That is the Christian God. And that's one thing I've always loved about Christianity was there was there were no strings on when you could see God. He was always available. He was always there. And at the end of the day, if we rely on God and call upon him when the world tries to attack us and destroy our faith, he will always be by our side and will always show up and fight our battles alongside us. That last part is very key. He won't fight our battles for us. He will fight our battles alongside us. That's saying that we, when the cross starts getting heavy, like I was talking about earlier, when the cross is getting heavy, you're, fat, you're battling your way uphill. Um, you can't just say, hey, God, I'm tired, and I'm going to lay down my cross for a little bit, carry it up for me. No, but what he will do is he will come alongside you, he will grab the other end, and he will carry it with you as you keep walking up the hill, up the mountain. And um, that's always really been cool for me just because it's like I always think about and it sounds a lot – it sounds weird coming from a Christian perspective. But I think about when you when you were in middle and high school, it was a little bit more prone for you to occasionally get into a fight. Somebody said something about you, about your mom, about somebody – and you got angry about it, decided to do something. And people you call your friend then have two choices. They can either sit back and watch the fight happen and just hope you end up all right. Or they can come in there, have your back, and fight alongside you. I don't want this to say I condone fighting. I don't want this to say that at all. It's just a good illusion that I have. Um, because a lot of other religions, a lot of the world will sit back and watch you fight and help you turn out all right. But the Christian God will jump in there with you. He's the one trying to protect you, keep you out of harm's way. But he's not going to sit there and just take over the fight for you. You still have to put in your fair share of punches. And the big faith connection that I made when reading this was if you're a Christian, then you will be attacked. Whether it's online, face to face, someone will say something to you. Someone may physically strike against you for your faith. Don't rule it out. Unfortunately, it's something we have to deal with because the world hated Jesus first. 
that's what Jesus actually told us. Like, the world hates you because it hated me first. Jesus said that. And to quote a movie that I've come to love and enjoy watching over and over again, that's in red colors. That means it's important. But if you're a Christian, then you will be attacked. There is no if or possibility to it. It is a win. In those times, we need to be reminded that we are not fighting alone, but God will always be by our side fighting tooth and nail for you. And the biggest thing, if you don't get anything else out of this as a Christian, take this. Take pride in your hard times. Because the hard, the hard times can either come from a scared enemy or a confident God. When you're going through hard times, it could be any level of things. It could be a divorce. It could be um, struggling in your daily life. It could be uh, depression issues. It could be any sort of really anything. Um, we've seen Job lost literally everything. Take pride in that because there are only two places that comes from. Either the enemy is scared of you and the way that you're living and wants to drag you down. Or God is looking upon you and telling the enemy, give him, give him or her your best shot. Because at the end of the day, they will still worship me. And then it comes back to us, like the story of Job. Job lost everything, lost his family, lost his business, lost his home, but he still worshiped God. And in the original rules, his health was not touchable. Then God said, okay, I'm that confident in Job that you can make him fall ill. And the enemy made Job fall ill, and Job still worshiped God, even though everyone around him was telling him, just denounce it, kill over and die, be done with this. Job said, no, this is my God. So when God allows us to be tested through hard times, and this is my challenge for you, when God allows us to be tested in hard times, how do you respond? Do you respond by denouncing your faith? You say, look, this hadn't been for me. I'm not part of that. I'm done. I'm out. Or do you keep persevering? Do you call on God and say, I am yours. Use me and get me through these hard times so I can further your kingdom and further your glory. That is never easy. There have been times that and I'll just I'll just use this channel for example. There have been times where I have had such negative comments about this channel, the way that I constructed it, that I considered just becoming any old regular gaming channel, just being like everybody else. Because I was tired of the backlash from being open about my faith. Being 100% clean and family friendly on the channel. But instead of saying I'm done with this. I told God, I was like, look, God, I don't know if you want this channel to be successful i don't know if you want me to make this a career but i'm going to keep doing this for you for god and what you do with it is up to you i'm not trying to pat myself on the back or anything like that it's just a real world example and it might be where you work it might be in your business someone is very anti-christian in your work and it may have gotten to the point where it's like, look, I want to find somewhere else to work. Or it may be in your school. I want to be in a different class. Because this kid is making fun of me for being a Christian. It happens. I'm sorry. It, it, I truly am sorry because it's such a shame 
that a lot of the same people that preach acceptance and love are the same ones that want to see us fail, want to see us gone as Christians. And that's kind of my big spill on that. Um, those of you on Twitch, I am about to play my outro slide for the YouTube bit. Um, and then I'm going to play the last two songs on the worship set. And the songs on the worship set, uh, and this is part, part of the reason I encourage you to join me on Twitch when I do this is just kind of a chance to reflect, a chance to look back at what I said and think about what we have um, and what God has given to us and what ha what God has challenged us. Because that's what I want this to be, is I want this to be a challenge for us Christians and a seed for those who aren't. I'm not going to try to force Christianity on anyone. That's not who I am. That's not what I'm called to do. My job is to tell you that it's here and to tell you a little bit about it. And if you want to become a Christian, absolutely wonderful. Praise God. If not, that's your decision. So I'm going to play my outro slide. And then I'm going to put it back on my stream starting soon. I will have a different... Um, well, I hope to have a different uh, scene picked out for this setup by next week. I hope to. Um, just kind of depends on how this week goes. But anyway, thank you guys for coming out and listening to my idea of modern day Christianity. I will see you guys next week in the series, but I will also see you throughout the week streaming live on Twitch and hopefully getting some YouTube videos pumped out here pretty soon. Thank you guys. Have a blessed night. Guess who's back?